Welcome back. Temperatures across much of Georgia plunged below freezing last week. A chilling reminder that winter is coming. Well, the cold snap sent many of Metro Atlanta's homeless scrambling for shelter, but unfortunately there are those that attempt to ride it out, risking life and limb. And that deeply concerns Milton Little Jr. As president of United Way of Greater Atlanta, he leads a vast network committed to tackling homelessness and other social issues. Little came to Atlanta years ago to learn. Now he's teaching the public about the power of empathy. He talks about it with Ed Baker in today's Executive Profiles. Let's go back to Long Island. Long Island, yeah. And, and your roots. Sure. Talk about your neighborhood, talk about your childhood, and then how you migrated to Morehouse. Okay. I grew up in a small town about 40 miles east of the city, Roosevelt, Long Island. Uh, we claim uh, a number of people, Julia Serving, um, Howard Stern, who was an elementary uh, classmate of mine, the rap group Public Enemy. Did you realize you were living in rarefied air, that you uh, had all this talent I, I had in no the neighborhood? Idea. I had no idea. It was just, they were just neighbors. They were the people you went to school with. Was Howard Stern out. Howard Stern? Howard Stern was Howard Stern, a little younger then. Foul mouth? Uh, no, not as foul, um, but funny. He was the class oh, clown. You always had a sense that uh, that comedy was somewhere in his future. And Dr. J, was he? Where was he in the scheme of things? Dr. J lived around the corner. I lived on Centennial Avenue. He lived on Pleasant Avenue, so you could get there in a in a quick uh, couple of steps. And now that the fact that uh, you live here and he lives here, do you see him? Yeah, we see each other uh, occasionally for a little while. His son Jules and my son Taylor were on the same AAU basketball team. So interesting enough, Small go from world. Roosevelt to come down here yeah. and have our sons playing basketball, just as we used to play basketball in the same parks uh, in Roosevelt. It's just amazing how small the world is. And it's time to decide where you're going to school, and you pick Morehouse. The interesting story is I never applied. Um, they found out about me, and I got a letter one day that said, we're, uh, we're offering you a, a spot here, and we will pay for your education. So that made it real easy, Ed. So you graduate, and then you decide to go professional or go back and get your advanced degree? I went to Columbia. I had decided as a senior in college that I really wanted a career in public policy that I wanted to figure out how to maneuver the levers of policy making in order to promote the kinds of um, equal rights and social economic change. justice, sure. social change that was really uh, exciting to me. You decide to go where? I stayed in New York. Um, had an opportunity for work for uh, Ed Koch for a little while when he was mayor of New York. He had set up this blue ribbon commission and I helped to, to staff that. And then I spent a little bit of time at a New York City public policy firm focused on education and economic development, those kinds of things. Did that for about four years and then went to a national uh, policy firm. Got a chance to travel all across the U.S. and, and to Europe um, doing that work. I specialized in youth employment, teen pregnancy, uh, and workforce related activities. Mm -hmm. Then move into the United Way. And I want to hear about the KISS. The KISS came back, that was several years before where I had the opportunity to be a part of a team that ultimately launched um, an outward bound program in New York City. And one day we were in a homeless shelter um, reading to kids and a little girl, you know, crawled in my lap and put her arm around me and kissed me on the cheek and said, please keep reading. And, and that was the start of a lot of board service and volunteer work. I was doing it professionally, but that sort of made me realize that I needed to give even more of myself to the things that mattered. So we're now running United Way, Massachusetts. Right. United Way, longtime brand, well known by people, but not well understood in terms of the kind of work that it was doing beyond simply being able to raise a lot of money and distribute it but also going through a pretty significant transition. Corporate America was changing, the monopoly place that United Way had had in the, in the workplace was diminishing. Um, charitable options were available to people in ways they had never been 
available before. How an organization of such legacy uh, would be able to change and adapt in that new world was really the challenge that excited me and why I went to Boston. And I know um, from friends what an unbelievable job you did. And then you get recruited to come back to Atlanta. Yeah, there's a personal side to that story. That's um, what I want to hear. This job opened up. The longtime CEO had retired. The headhunters had called. They'd come knocking, and I had just pushed them off. And then one day, Brian Gallagher, the head of United Way then of America, called my house looking for me. And my wife answered the call, told him to call me on the cell. She eventually found out that he was calling to entice me to at least interview for the job in Atlanta. Now, Tracy, born and raised in L.A., who had gone to school in Massachusetts, lived in New York, lived in New Jersey, never liked the cold, was suddenly intrigued by the idea that we could get to a place that had a climate <laughs> a little bit closer to what she was really comfortable with. And so here I am, man. Well, it's worked out great. I mean, look at what you've done here. I mean, you're number two in the country now in terms of giving. Number well, two, yeah. the ninth largest city, and you're number two. Exactly. How does that happen? Hey, you know, it's um, because Atlanta is an incredibly generous town. And everyone who interviewed me told me that for all the challenges that the South may have, one thing that it is blessed with is a generous group of people who do believe in important causes and we just get an opportunity to benefit from that. Where are you gonna take United Way from here? We've succeeded in many of the key areas, but I think all of us will recognize that Atlanta and Georgia have significant challenges with respect to child and health, uh, children's health well-being whether it's child poverty, um, infant mortality, and those kinds of things. So as we go forward, I think much of the work of United Way is really going to center around how do we create healthy children, healthy families, healthy communities. And that's what you'll see the messaging, the impact agenda, the fundraising all designed to achieve. United Way of Greater Atlanta ranks as one of Atlanta's top 20 largest nonprofits. Last year, it reported revenues of more than $100 million.